Welcome to the Town Board Workshop Meeting, Thursday, August 4th. Please rise and salute the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Emergency exits are to my right, behind the town attorney, and also the door you came in. Roll, please. Councilman Delango? Here. Councilman Gutierrez? Here. Councilwoman Hetzelberger? Here. Councilman Doyle? Here. And Supervisor Brody? Here. I make a motion to open the public hearing for a local law amending the zoning maps of the town of Amenia and correcting the meets and bounds description of the soil mining overlay zoning district. Second. No one signed up. I know, but we still have to finish the motion. Councilwoman Hetzberger? Aye. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilwoman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Purdy? Yes. Okay. And there's no comment? Well, let me just ask that you explain in at least two sentences what the change was and why, because the public needs to know that. Yes, you wanted to do that, Denise? Yeah. Okay. What the, it's, it's more of a correction than a change. What happened is when they did this law back in 2011, um, and there was um, a special permit issued in 2013 following that, what happened is when the surveyor prepared the meets and bounds description, they have a map and it has all of the you know, surveyor's uh, courses on it, when they typed it up, the surveyor apparently omitted one of the courses off the map. So when the county tried to plot it to amend the zoning maps, the description didn't close by that little section. So what we're doing is going back and doing the correction. Um, the surveyor for the applicant at the time made the error. He has corrected it and you know retyped the description. So that's what it is, just to insert that one. I think that helps. Thank you. Okay, um, so there's no one who wants to speak at the public hearing. Do I make a motion to close the public hearing? Second. Councilman Hitzberger? Aye. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Purdy? Yes. Public comment? Are we back in the yes, we are. Uh, Do we need to make a motion? Well, we closed. I think we need to make a motion to return to regular meeting. Second. You can stay there. Yeah. Sharon Kroger. Wait a minute. Uh, just oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Oh. Okay, we just housekeeping. Okay, go ahead, Sharon. Uh, this is just uh, by way of uh, saying that I hope you're able to be making progress on the uh, emergency medical um, district for the uh, southern end of town. And I know it's difficult, and I know that um, it, to some extent the tools to do it aren't available, and that makes it all the more difficult. But I hope you're having progress on it, and um, um, if you should run into a, a uh, a, a sense that you're not going to be able to put this together effectively. I just wanted to suggest that you might want to consider setting up a, a work group and see if there's some folks maybe from the town and from elsewhere who might be helpful in terms of trying to sort out perhaps a new uh, way of doing things or a new model. It isn't going to be a solution if the taxpayers are faced with the same 171% increase because it's not even legal. Are there any other public comment? Any supervisor's report? Sharon, you might want to stay to hear this. Oh, am I going to get an answer? I didn't think yes. I, an answer. I just thought you might. I was going to do it. I already had it under my report. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> I'll make it quick. <laughs> uh, the RFP that was to be sent out today is waiting for the 
uh, appropriate insurance coverage, what the appropriate insurance coverage should be by NIMR, which Byron Barnes is working on. We have been meeting since October 27th, monthly, with uh, an ambulance uh, services committee from the Wasaic Fire Department and District and the Wasaic District and Fire Department. Uh, we've also had meetings with County, Dutchess County 911 representatives who have come out and guided us along the way to work toward a solution for the ambulance. Now, the, what we are going to be doing, we also hired Brad Pinsky, whose specialty is EMS, and had him and voted to have him do an RFP for us. Now, the request for proposal is going to be for an ambulance service provider. This serve, the ambulance services are going to be covering the whole town of Amenia, not just Wasaic. Because in order for the town to take over this responsibility, the whole town has to be covered. Uh, we decided not to do an ambulance district um, for one reason would be additional hardship on people because with an ambulance district, uh, none of the exemptions that people currently have assisting them to pay their taxes would be able to be used. So the ambulance services will be a line item in the budget, will be part of the tentative budget that has to go to the town clerk by September 30th. And we're um, very, cl uh, we're pretty much ready to um, send it out. We just, um, I just wanted to make sure that in the RFP we had appropriate insurance coverage to cover the town. So our insurance provider is, you know, looking at that and telling us exactly what we need to put in there. Uh, as soon as the RFP is complete, it will be sent out to three ambulance service companies who have the certificate of need required to cover all of the town of Amenia. They are NDP, Mobile Life, and MSTAR. The cost of providing ambulance services will be a line item in the 2017 budget so that the cost will be shared by Amenia and Wasaic taxpayers. And as soon as we have the final RFP, we will make it available to the public if they would like to see it. And that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, Optimum uh, added a modem to the town board meeting room to provide Wi-Fi to Optimum customers on this side of the building. We're looking into what needs to be done so Wi-Fi will be available for other providers other than Optimum. In a meeting with new Optimum account manager, Matthew O'Hare, I brought up the lack of Wi-Fi in the town board meeting room side of the building, and he arranged to have the modem added. In addition, I asked for a coverage map and told him there are areas that would like more, co uh, more coverage, like Smithfield. So if anyone is interested in more coverage for their area, please call the town hall so we can let them know. In addition, I told them that some people with Dover Plains addresses but lived in the town of Amenia were not able to access Amenia's local access channel only Dover's, so they are going to look into that as well. He asked me if we had a park that needed an op optimum hotspot, so he is going to have Optimum look into providing a hotspot, so there will be Wi-Fi at Beekman Park and outside the town hall, especially in the playground area. All of these additions can be added at no ta cost to the town as they are part of our contract. I contacted Dutchess County Tourism to see if they could send books with uh, information about sites, restaurants, and other events in Dutchess County. They sent me several brochures for numerous events and historic sites. So if you're planning on spending a day yourself or with visiting friends and family, please come to the Amenia Town Hall and help yourself to the brochures on a table just inside the front door so you can enjoy all Dutchess County has to offer. Do any of the books contain events for Amenia? Yes. Awesome. For the Optimum, um, if you could also bring up to, was it Mr. O'Hare, that um, it's not possible to pause or DVR the 
um, municipal access channels, which have received complaints about. Oh, and pause and DVR? Yeah, and okay. that's something that people want to be able to do. I know that they're able to get it on YouTube um, once it's posted up there, um, but sometimes they're actually watching us, you know, like now, and they need a drink. So they want, they want to take a pause. I can ask them about that. Thank you. Councilor? Good evening. The monthly share has been remitted to the supervisor in the amount of $426.50. I've circulated by an email to the board members that I've received two applications for the posted temp position. And I don't know if you wanted to schedule interviews next week to meet with those two candidates. I'm not available next week. Okay. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, I've also received Donna Diggins. Who else is available next for week. next week? I'm available. I'm not. You're not? So we need to wait two weeks then? It's going to be late. have to be later for me. Because okay. we need to pick a time to do this. Well, if it isn't next week, it needs to be sometime. I mean, any time like after 7 is okay with me. So we're looking at the week of the 15th? We knew the 18th. Seven. We have three public hearings. After the public hearings. She goes out the following week, so. Okay, let's interview and find somebody to replace Katrina and you can have your coverage in right away. Is there any other date that people are available that week? Not at seven. I didn't say at seven. Whatever. I mean, it just has to be late, later for me. Seven, eight, seven nine, thirty, nine, eight o'clock, whatever. Was well, there any other day other than the eighteenth at seven thirty that people are available? A any yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday nice. is fine with me. I'm available. Do you available? What about uh, what about the twelfth? Are you available the twelfth? No. I'm not available next week. It's not next mm, week at all. We're looking at the week of the 15th. We're looking, we were talking about the 9th. Oh, we were? Just I can do it on the 16th at 7.30. And you're not available next week at all, Damien? Uh, no, I'm traveling next week. But the 15th. On the 16th? 16th. Sorry, 16th, that works for me. 7.30? Would that work for you? 16 at 7.30, yes. Yes. Okay, 16th at 7.30 it is. Okay, I'll call the two candidates. Okay, thank you. Okay. I've also received Donna Diggins' resignation from the planning board and is deputy town clerk, effective July 26th. I just need a motion to accept that. Make the motion. Second. Councilman Hensberger? Aye. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Party? Yes. And I need authorization to go ahead and advertise for that open position. Make the motion. Second. Councilwoman Gutierrez? Oh, Hensberger? Aye. <laughs> Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Party? And also this evening, I've circulated to each of the board members um, a, re a resolution asking for the authorization. Uh, for the before we do that, um, excuse me. Sure. Um, what I would like to do is uh, to make okay. a motion that we hire Larissa Delango on a temporary basis to cover the planning board secretary position. Second. What is her hourly wage? Uh, 1545 and she said she would be able to work two days a week and cover the meetings at night. Councilwoman Hitzelberger? Aye. Councilman Delanco? Abstain. 
Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Perotti? Yes. I've also circulated to the board this evening authorization for the application of the Justice Court Assistance Program grant. I uh, offer the resolution, whereas uh, it's called uh, resolution, is it? resolution 45. 45. 45. It's called the Justice Court Assistance Program. Whereas the supervisor has received the application for the Justice Court Assistance Program, which shall be used only in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 280 of the Laws of 1999 with all rules and regulations governing said program. And whereas any goods and services purchased with any Justice Court Assistance Program funds shall be obtained in accordance with acceptable procurement practices established by the Town of Amenia. Whereas no funds awarded pursuant to this application shall be used to compensate justices or non-judicial staff or to reduce or otherwise supplant funding provided by the Town of Amenia to its Justice Court, be it therefore resolved that the Town of Amenia Town Board authorizes and supports the application for the Justice Court Assistance Program. I'll make that motion. Second. Councilman Hitzelberger? Aye. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Thank you, everyone. And then just two announcements for this evening. The Wasik Fire Company Auxiliary is holding a chicken barbecue on Saturday, August 20th. The Wasik Firehouse Chicken and Fixings from 4 to 6. There's going to be DJ. Tickets are available for $15 for adults, $7 for children 12 and under. You may contact any auxiliary member. Uh, as you guys all know, Nancy's here at the town clerk's office. You're welcome to see her. Also, the Amina Fire Company is doing a 200 club raffle. Tickets are $20. First drawing is on November 2nd. The second drawing is going to be held on December 8th. And I'd also encourage you to see any member of the Amenia Fire Company for your 200 club tickets. So those are your happenings for our two departments. And another happening is the Lions Club is ha having a bike safety event this Saturday from 9.30 to 11.30. Um, so they'll be out on the rail trails. So if you're out biking, make sure you stop by, see the Lions and get some safety information. Thank you, gotcha. And that concludes the town clerk's report. Okay, we have a building department report. Please find July's monthly report for the building department as building permits go. We have issued eight new building permits totaling $2,236. We are continuing with certificate of occupancy searches. And for this month, we did eight searches, which total $1,000 and one sign permit of $120. The total for the month is $3,356. There was a water committee meeting on July 13th. Uh, new business were to complete a map drawn up of the entire water district and certified by engineer Sean Michael Morgan. Discs were made up of the map for easy reference and future updates. The hydrants will be flushed next week. The new control system will be installed next week. The hydrant on Powderhouse Road will also be replaced next week. The following vouchers were approved and reviewed. Thai Sales, 628.60. USA Blue Book, 674.65. USA Blue Book, 823.70. And SEBI 6960. The next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, August 10th, 2016 at 5.30. Are there any other committee reports? CAC will probably meet next um, and uh, I'll have a, a report for the next at our next meeting should be August 17th at 7 p.m. And the kitchen committee pushed back their meeting uh, due to scheduling conflicts. So it'll be, I believe, the 24th um, at 7 o'clock here at Town Hall. Recreation. 
recreation. <laughs> you always forget about me. I don't know. No, I don't. I was waiting. <laughs> wait, wait. Before you get started, Connie, the playoffs, the baseball teams. Yep. She went from the hotel. Okay, Christine, go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's tragic, Dawn. Um, first of all, I just want to give you another opening day picture. Oh, good. That we have. Um, right at the moment, there's a, here's just a picture also for to keep up. It's um, Connie Mack. Right now they're doing, um, they're in uh, Connecticut and Waterbury, and their game starts at 7 o'clock. They win tonight, they win the championship. Mm -hmm. And Babe Ruth, we ended on Monday. Millerton beat us. And right now Millerton and Pine Plains are playing. Zach was pitching? Yeah, we won't talk, Don. Okay, go on, Christine. <laughs> um, I do have my numbers done for um, my farm league and stuff. I didn't know if you guys wanted to hand the money in to make one for you, sorry. She can Thank share you mine. Mine. Yeah. That's she can have mine. That's how we share. <laughs> <laughs> That was what? Ooh, found somewhere. That ring was that ring was found um, in the softball dugout uh, just before we finished farm league. I got a hold of the softball. I talked to them. I talked to all the parents that I've known. Nobody knows who it is. It's a really nice ring, but it's a man's ring, and somebody's lost it. Yes, it's a style maker and company ring. So anybody wants to retrieve it, they can come to the town hall. Yep. So I've handed all my money in for the season of 2016. Um, we did really well. I feel everything was good. On the back of the sheet, I wrote down just Connie Mack and Babe Ruth um, numbers. We did have more out of town um, to make Babe Ruth this year. That was the only reason why we were able to have a team. So, um, and they did really well. They did really well. It was a young team, mainly made up of 12-year-olds. Um, a lot of them came from Dover. I thank them very much for helping. Um, the coach was from Dover too, so it just worked out. It just, it was, at least we had a team and we got to play. That's all that matters. Um, as I said, the Farm League season started April 23rd. We ended on the 18th of June. We had a few special games in between there. Um, I know I'm very busy. I don't get here fast enough to tell everybody. I sometimes, I forget to actually text everybody what's going on. Uh, I apologize. I do try to put it on Facebook. Um, to let when we're doing something down there at the fields. So on, um, before we ended, Aminia Red, um, our major group, is ages 9 to 12. We played a game under the lights with Dover. Um, at that time, we also honored Mr. John Lamb with a plaque that read, thank you for coaching all the kids in our area from the town of Aminia Baseball, 2016. Um, this man really does a lot, not only for us, but just for all the kids. He makes sure they're all they're pitching and their arms don't hurt. And it's nice to have somebody like that in, in our area. He lives in Sharon, Connecticut, and he takes all his time to come here. So that's nice. Um, I will get with Dawn soon and try to put down like February, March, and April so we can get the pitching clinics taken care of for next year. Um, and then we did a, a Amenia Yellow Miners, which are ages seven and eight-year-olds. We did them under the lights on a Sunday night, and they had so much fun. They played against a Dover team, and these guys, they're, they're little eyes. You know, that's what it's all about, just watching them. They had fun. We had ice cream afterwards. It was just it. That's just the whole game, um, and it's nice. So I just want to thank all the coaches I've had uh, this year. For Farm League, we had um, Jason Dean, Christine Ford, Mike Delango, Harrison Ford, Paul Winters, Thomas Ford, Steve Reed, Scott Russo, Chris Shea, Christy Kilmer, Tara Armstrong, John Tripp, Sean Howard, and Krista Carlo did Little League. Um, and that's also softball in that too. You know, without these coaches and their families, there's a lot of parents that step up too and help out the coaches. You know, we wouldn't have a great program as we have. That's what really it's all about, family and everybody coming together. Um, at this time, I need to thank two sponsors that helped out Little Leaguers um, with their uniforms is Lee's Trees and McEnroe Painting. I also need to thank an umpire, William Ford. He did all my, he did the major team 
um, when they played against other teams. And he's a very fair person, let me tell you, the looks he gets from all of them. Um, like I said, Babe Ruth, we had Chris Shea who ran that, and we had two um, children, two guys that are in college, and uh, Dave Gillio and Thomas Ford actually helped him a lot with that. Uh, Connie Mack, we had Bob Dunlop and DJ Riley. And like I said, pitching coach, we had John Lamb. I need to thank several people um, in doing all these programs um, and making sure they go good. It's not it's from day one when we do opening day, when we do the tractor, when we do the food, to when we close. Um, I need to thank the Menia Town Board for allowing me to do all this too. Um, the Menia Recreation Commission, the Menia Lions Club, the Fresh Town of Amenia, Amenia Fire Company, the Wasaic Fire Company, Mike and Trisha Lawrence, Lawrence, they did the tractor um, with the two hay bales um, to pull. And Chris and Kelly Milano, they did, they used their barbecue and we, that's how we were able to cook food up there. Um, and all the parents and coaches and kids and from far away from our, our coaches to other coaches, it, it worked out really nice, it was a nice group. Um, I also need to thank Sean Howard and Chuck Mayville for the fields, they're awesome. I mean, here they always make them look good. Um, like I said, Babe Ruth uh, ended on the, fir uh, on the first, August 1st, and we lost to Millerton. Hmm. <clears throat> and right now, Connie Mack is doing a playoff season, uh, series right now with Waterbury um, at Bucks Hill Park in Waterbury, Connecticut. So I won't know much about that until later, and I will post it as soon as I know of something. Um, I did a little background check on Connie Mack, and we started, that group started in 1983 in Connecticut, and Aminia won some championships in 1993, in 1994, 2000, 2008, and 2015. What I want to know is if anybody is in the area that's had these children, had their sons in this program, or if they have pictures or anything, that would be really nice. Um, I want to get a plaque, a nice plaque that says, you know, this is the years that we won, and yes, I'll be bringing that trophy back. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if it was a traveling trophy. Uh, Babe Ruth has a traveling trophy. So I did the same thing with the Babe Ruth. Um, I talked to the gentleman who runs that, Matt Meddy, out of Sharon, Connecticut. Um, he said he started that program in 1999, that there was a traveling trophy, that we had problems a few years ago, if you remember me coming to you, because we didn't get that trophy back. I asked him if there's any way to find any information when we won besides 2013 and 2014. Um, and he said he doesn't know. So again, I'm asking the public if anybody has anything, any pictures, or just remember the year you won, that would be really awesome. I'd like to get something together just to like, this is our town and let's put it together and show what baseball was here. Um, I'll have to look to see if they have any pictures because Anthony, my son Anthony was on one of those winning teams when they won the championship. So I'll have to see what I have. Okay. We should also be able to get some information out of the um, Millerton News photo ar archives. I'll have um, to look into there too. Yeah, they're, they're all online and it's really easy, easy to go through and search them. Okay. Arlene did an exhibit um, maybe two years ago right by the auditorium. It was a whole... Um, that little wall before you go in for the time cards, mm -hmm. and it was a, it was oh, entitled Amenia Baseball, baseball yeah, a lot Town. Of it was uh, yeah. like Farm League. It wasn't the uh, older groups. That's what I want because usually the older groups people forget because not all kids. Yeah, they're not there. all from Amenia. That's from other yeah, towns. they're from uh, surrounding towns. Um, as far as I know, we're the only one in the league, um, Amenia from New York, that plays against all Connecticut groups. Mm -hmm. And we can have. Um, I know a few years ago we had some kids from Pauling. Um, our team, it was made up a few from Amenia, but you had Pauling and you had Dover. Um, and I'm, I don't know if there's any from any other surrounding towns, but I do Sometimes know Sometimes there were some from Pine Plains too. Yeah, so I don't know, but that would be something interesting. They're not just all from Amenia. Um, but we do make up a nice team, so it's good. Just to know that we won those times was interesting. I got looking, I'm learning how to use my smartphone. <laughs> so um, it's getting the better out of me. <laughs> So, but um, I think that's about it, unless you have any questions. No, I'd just like to thank you and all of the coaches that have spent all the time and just give you a round of applause. Good job. Uh, 
another thing is if any you know community members or anybody out there wants to help next year, you're more than welcome to help donate anything you want. Um, like I said, we did a bunch of uh, dinners, barbecues. Uh, I did one for Babe Ruth, our last home game. Um, and happened to be Millerton was there and I happened to feed them too. Then we did one for Connie Mack, uh, their last home game, uh, not including the series. And um, it was also John Lamb's birthday, so we had a birthday cake made up for him, so it was nice. It, it turned out nice. And all the kids appreciate that, and their families do too. It's just a little something like, thank you very much. Um, I had money left in the budget. I do have some money in the budget. I do have some money coming back in to reimburse certain uh, Connie Mac and Babe Ruth lines because I didn't use as many umpires. So that will be coming in later on. Um, and then I'm going to have to buy more equipment. I didn't buy much equipment this year because I held off, but I'm going to do that. And then I also want to make sure we start getting, um, I didn't make my recreation meeting because I had a baseball game. I thought that was more important. And um, so I just want to make sure that I get done that when I do the pitching clinics, I have those windows covered and, and that will be done before December because I will tell you that it will be done. Okay. I will make sure of it. And I think we also need to thank Silo Ridge and Discovery for their assistance with the fields. Yes. Yep. Because I believe they helped with the clay and stuff. Um, I'm not quite sure what else they do, but... Yeah, I mean, they, they make a donation every year and uh, help get the fields in order. Yep. I know this year a lot of people were sad that we didn't have a concession stand. When we were cooking hot dogs and stuff at different times, if I had extra stuff, I have no problem. And we gave it, you know, we gave it out um, to other people that were there and they were just really happy. But Yeah, we um, tried. But that's why I had the vending machine put there. At least they would have that. And that's worked really well. Um, everybody's gone to it. So... Christine, next year, I know when I was playing Little League, we were always sponsored by a local business, all right? And me, you know, we took pride in the different teams that we played on, and it actually, people that didn't have children playing baseball and stuff like that, they actually attended the games and they were a little more involved because it was the business that was sponsoring the teams. Mm -hmm. So now, what do we have to do to approach businesses to say, hey, let's sponsor the, the Connie Mack team or let's sponsor the T-ball team? I, I mean, how does that work? Why don't we do that I know I'm not now? supposed to do that because I'm on the Recreation Commission and I can't go solicitating anybody. Okay. But if anybody in the public would really like their business to be there, I don't see why they can't come to me and we've worked something out. Okay. So if they come to you, it's okay, but you can't go solicit. I can't solicit. go to them. Because, I mean, I'd love to have Good, 18 I kids that. running around with the Lango Automotive <laughs> on their shirt, you, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, if... Because we have, we're talking, uh, well, our numbers went down this year. So I only had, you know, one team for Tiny Tots, which are four and under. I only had one team for T-Ball, as you see, uh -huh. which are five and six-year-olds. And then we had one minor team, which were uh, seven and eight-year-olds. Even though we had 18 of those kids and there was four sets of twins, not all of them show up on traveling when they're traveling. And then same thing goes for the majors. We had, I think, 17 kids signed up. Not all of them show up. You know, we're like we make we're able to make at least a team when we go traveling from town to town. But, but you know what I'm thinking with this, if we could get the sponsorship going, it might solve our concession stand problem too. Because then we go, you know, the different sponsors, you know, Delango Automotive. You got week one, you got to run the concession stand. Uh, week two is Harlem Valley Materials. So they got to run the concession stand. You, you know, almost get the the public a little more involved in it. Where you know they're involved in it now, but if you don't have a child. Playing baseball, you're probably not there. No. And what I did notice when I played, y you had the whole town involvement, not only the people playing or watching their kids playing, because you were sponsored. You, you know, you yeah. were taking pride in your, your little league team playing. Yeah. So maybe we could get together and see what we could do next year about that. Good idea. When Zach was playing, it's a very good league, idea. We had some resources sponsored. The Little League, that was two years. That was two years, yeah. yeah. And, two and then years. now we have, yeah, now there's two groups that's helping to cover yeah. the cost of the Little League. Well, like, you know, like I said, I played for J&J &J Log and Lumber. And, yeah. you know, my, my sister played for, yeah. I forget who she played for. And I know what the boys like. They like that they're able to keep their, their jerseys. Yeah. Where I'm, now I'm having the girls softball say the same thing to me. Like, why can't we keep our jerseys? And I said, well, we need to work on that. 
So I did have somebody come up to me, um, Marco actually come up to me and said that he wants to sponsor one. I'm not sure if there'll be a fall ball, softball or anything, so we haven't really looked into that. But I know he's willing to, I guess, sponsor yeah. the older, the senior group. Yeah, and he's going to buy the jerseys. Group. Yeah, where we have a junior group too, so there could <coughs> be another group to help with that one. So okay. if you can't solicit, I'd like to say, you know, if anybody's interested in local business in the town of Amenia, mm -hmm. they want to, you know, see if we could get some advertisement and stuff with the Little League, it, it, you know, the, the Farm League or whatever. Um, got you know, enough teams. Start we got Babe out. Ruth and you got Connie Mack. Connie Connie you can reach Maybe. out to Christine. You can reach out to me. Reach out to the town board members. But I think it'll be a good thing to get the community involved and, you know, let's get in, let's yep. bring baseball back. And yeah. Maybe the I'm Millerton really News can do an article on. Well, that. <laughs> <laughs> so to help you out, Mike, because you're doing numbers right now, something to put together is the cost of shirts, the cost to run a team. So that way when you meet with Mike, you can say, look, this is how much we would need so you can truly sponsor the team, how much the shirts would be. You know, talk to Alan, find out the cost of shirts, 16 shirts, numbers, name, and then their thing. Yeah, Ask I, to use stone I would know. How much yeah, was that? I would know how much that is if I call him for the little yep. league. Group. And yep. then, then yep. that way they might can have a solid how many teams number. so we know how many businesses we Do have the to three go for. Do the three uppers the first year and try it, and just yep. so that way they know. Yep, because you have the. Well, just get the, the, the get the numbers together. I know he won't charge you for that. What's that? The template's already down there where we do our shirts. He's really good too. He gives me, he's helped me out quite a bit on different things down there. Um, and I just go to him all the time for everything. Right. It's nice, you just call up somebody. It's, it, it's the same thing when I call the guy up for the trophies. I just call him up, say this is what I want. He's like, not a problem. I know what you need, done. It's nice, I've been doing this for four years so it don't, only took me four years to figure it out right <laughs> and have a nice, you know, nice communication with everybody. Um, I love to talk, so once they get on the phone with me, they have a, we, we talk forever. <laughs> That's the only problem. Let's but. see what happens. Cool. I think it'll work. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, and don't forget the Gabby Farkas softball tournament. Gabby Farkas softball tournament will be held on August 12, 13, and 14. Starts Friday night. Aaron, six. Starts Friday night at 6 p.m. at the Beekman Park, and then it'll continue on Saturday morning beginning at 9 a.m., continuing throughout the day. And then final playoffs will be held on Sunday. Thank you. Beginning at 9. I'm looking at Aaron, so that way he can try to help me out here. <laughs> so come support uh, the Amenia Fire Company at the uh, Gabby Farkas Annual Softball Tournament. There'll be food. <laughs> Food and fun. Food and fun. Okay, I believe that's all our committee reports. Before we go on, we did um, complete the public hearing for the local law amending the zoning maps. If you have to um, do that resolution. 46. 46. Determination pursuant to New York State Environmental Quality Review Act pertaining to proposed local law number one of 2016 entitled a local law amending the zoning maps of the town of Amenia and correcting the meets and bounds description of the soil mining overlay zoning district. Whereas on or about July 21st, 2011, the town board adopted local law number two of 2011 amending the zoning maps of the town of Amenia by adding to the soil mining overlay zoning district 65 plus acres of land being a portion of a 143.91 plus or minus acre parcel designated as tax parcel number 7165004040090 located on Sinpatch Road and owned by Ridgecrest Farms Incorporated. Whereas said local law number two of 2011 was filed with the New York State Department of State on August 4, 2011, became effective on that day. Whereas local law number two of 2011 included a meets and bounds description of said 65 acre parcel based on a map entitled Map of Proposed Amendment to Soil Mining Overlay District prepared for Ridgecrest Farm Incorporated situate in the town of Amina, Dutchess County, New York, dated January 17, 2010, as prepared by Zarecki and Associates, LLC, engineers, architects, and surveyors, Pauling, New York, 
and local law number two reference map attached here too, whereas a copy of said local law number two of 2011 was provided to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development for plotting in the Dutchess County records and for preparation of new zoning maps for the town of Amenia, including the soil mining overlay zoning district. Whereas the county planning department has advised the town of Amenia that upon attempting to plot the boundaries of the 65 acre parcel to add to the town's SMO district and zoning maps, an error was discovered in the written meets and bounds description and that the boundaries of the parcel did not close. Whereas the Recking Associates LLC, the prepare of said map of the 65 acres and the meets and bounds description included in local law number two has examined said map and meets and bounds description and has made the correction necessary to the written meets and bounds description to close the boundaries of the 65 acre parcel. Whereas this correction to the meets and bounds description of the 65 acre parcel does not change the size, configuration, or location of the 65 acre parcel, which was intended to be added to the SML district by the adoption of local law number two of 2011. Whereas prior to adoption of local law number two of 2011, the town board conducted the appropriate reviews, made the required referrals to the county planning department and the town of Amina planning board held a public hearing upon notice published in the town's official newspaper and adopted a negative declaration pursuant to the state environmental conservation law, all in accordance with the requirements of article 10 of the zoning law, the town of Amina and the laws of New York state whereas proposed local law number one of 2016 entitled a local law amending the zoning maps of the town of Amenia, correcting the meets and bounds description of the soil mining overlay zoning district was introduced by resolution number 13 of 2016 on March 17, 2016, so as to correct the typographical error in the meets and bounds description of the SMO. Now therefore be it resolved that pursuant to part 617 of the implementing regulations per pertaining to Article 8 State Environmental Quality Review Act, the town board determines that the correction of the typographical error in the meets and bounds description of the soil mining overlay zoning district and amendment of the town zoning maps in accordance with and correction does not constitute an action as defined and may be considered without further regard to seeker. The following resolution was voted upon with all councilwomen Councilman voting as, fo as follows, and I make that motion. Second. Supervisor Prody? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Uh, yes. Councilman Hitzelberger? Aye. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. And Councilman Delango? Yes. Okay, resolution number 47. 47. Adoption by the Town Board of the Town of Amenia of Local Law Number 1 of 2016 entitled a local law amending the zoning maps of the Town of Amenia and correcting the meets and bounds description of the soil mining overlay zoning district. Now some of this is... Um, is the same as the prior resolution. Whereas notice of public hearing was duly advertised in the Miller to News, the official newspaper of the town of Amenia on July 21st, 2016, and posted on the town clerk's signboard on July 15, 2016. And the whereas the town board by resolution number 46, I guess. Adopted on August 4, 2016, as determined pursuant to Part 617 of the Implementing Regulations pertaining to Article 8, State Environmental Quality Review Act, that the correction of the typographical error in the meets and bounds description of the SML district and amendment of the town zoning maps in accordance with such correction does not constitute an action as defined and may be considered without further regard to seeker. Whereas the public hearing our proposed local law number one of 2016 was duly held at the town hall at 7 p.m. on August 4, 2016, and all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak on behalf of or in opposition to said local law number one of 2016 or any part thereof. 
whereas the town board, after due deliberation, finds it in the best interest of the town of Amenia to adopt Local Law 1 of 2016. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the town board hereby adopts Local Law Number 1 of 2016, entitled A Local Law Amending the Zoning Maps of the Town of Amenia and Correcting the Meets and Bounds Description of the Soil Mining Overlay Zoning District, a copy of which is attached hereto and made a part hereof. And the town clerk B and she hereby is directed to enter said local law in the minutes of the meeting and to enter said local law in the local law book of the town and to give due notice to the adoption of the local law too and to file said local law with the New York Secretary of State. I make that resolution. Second discussion. There's two paragraphs here that weren't included in 46 I feel should be read. On page two, uh, at the bottom, whereas the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development provided a response pursuant to general municipal law section 239, dated April 14, 2016, advising that the proposed zoning amendment, which is the subject of the proposed local law number one of 2016, is a matter of local concern, and whereas the town of Amenia Planning Board has not submitted any comments on proposed local law number one of 2016 within the time allowed by law, and whereas resolution number 36 of 2016 was duly adopted on July 14th, 2016 by the Town Board, scheduling a public hearing on proposed local law number one of 2016 to be held at the Town Board at Town Hall 4988 Route 22 Amenia, New York, at 7 p.m. on August 4th, 2016, to hear all interested parties on said proposed local law and authorizing publication of notice of public hearing in the Millerton News, the town's official newspaper, and posting a notice of public hearing by the town clerk or on the town clerk's official sign board. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Purdy? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Hitzelberger? Aye. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. And Councilman Delango? Yes. Okay, we've been, um, we've had a complaint about overnight parking in front of the cemetery on Route 22, just north of Lake Amina Road. Um, we, uh, the person filing the complaint also notified um, the New York State DOT who it told us that what we need to do is to do a resolution authorizing um, no parking, no overnight parking signage along in that area. Um, does anyone, um, I think what we need to do is decide the hours for that resolution. I think you should just do like seven to seven, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. I mean, unless you want to make it a little later, 9, 9, 8, 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. or something like that, but I think... I think we should do... That's the time you want to do, 7 to 7? I think 7 to 7 would be fine. Hmm. You know, the cemeteries, you know, if anything's going on at the cemetery, it's during the day. Um, you know, the big thing is... So 7 p.m. to 7 a.m.? I think 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., no parking. Rail trail closes at dusk, right? Yeah, it's 8 o'clock and it's still light. I'm just wondering if somebody does park there for rail trail. Well, they shouldn't be there anyway because it's, it's a, there's a sight distance problem. So seven to seven. Going once, going twice. Does everyone agree that's a good time to put in there then? Sounds fine. Okay, resolution number forty-eight. Um, we're moving on to the resolution. Are we still in the discussion portion? I don't know. Do we? Before I read the resolution, have we decided? Well, on a time. This is this is the one thing I wanted to bring up about this particular issue. 
the, the majority of the discussion regarding it took place in email out of the public view, which I did not feel was right, especially when it got down to, and this is an email on Tuesday, which if anybody in the public is interested in, you're gonna have to put in a FOIL request with the town clerk um, for parking issue on Route 22 um, to, to find out what the conversation was that took place in email outside of the public eye and got down to the point where three board members um, said whether they were for or against the particular issue. That is, you know, we're not supposed to do that. We didn't say we were well before or against the particular issue. We were trying to decide whether to put no parking or no overnight parking. And that can be part of the discussion here. But the first the complaint was about overnight parking of the truck sitting there with their motor going on and on and on. I felt that the way that the conversation went through email should have been done here at the public meeting, and that is my point. Thank you. That's totally fair, Gretchen. I mean, our, our emails are all public record. Yeah. Uh, and that is something that everybody should be aware of. Uh, so on occasion, it does help, I think, to have some coverage of some background happen, you know, just the setup or the minutia of it or whatever. Um, well, that's why I have it under discussion. Yeah, but your point is well taken. We should probably present the full background of the issue. So there was a complaint. Uh, there was a complaint about overnight parking in front of the <coughs> Catholic Cemetery on Route 22, just north of uh, Lake Amenia Road. Basically what was happening, there was a lot of over-the-road trucks that were parked there. They were the oversized truck, oversized truck with the yellow caution lights. They were parking there overnight because it's a law in New York State. They can, the drivers can only drive X amount of hours, so they found a place to pull off and basically rest for 12 hours. So during the summer months, it's tough because the trucks are running. They let the trucks run all night. They leave the orange lights flashing. People were complaining about fumes going in their homes and the yellow lights flashing all night. They would sleep there 12 hours or 10 hours, whatever they had to sleep, then they would get in their trucks and leave early in the morning and be back on the road. That was the complaint that I received. And that's when I sent the email out, you know, what do we think about no parking, well, oh, no overnight parking. Denise, your email, you met with Stan. I didn't meet with, I, oh. spoke, with Stan. I spoke with DOT first. Um, about what exactly they would be looking for to post signage and they said they needed a resolution with the request from the town board saying specifically what the board was requesting. They wanted the distance, um, the identification of the location, the hours that you wanted the no parking to be in effect. Um, and after I spoke with DOT, then I spoke with Stan and Stan brought up some additional issues, um, not just with the overnight parking, but with some people he believed were parking and crossing the road to get to the rail trail. He also raised an issue with sight distance coming out of uh, Lake Mania. Um But the person who complained also called New York State DOT and spoke to a person there, mm -hmm. and that person told him that he was, that was the first um, way we knew that a resolution was needed to even put a sign there. Right, and that so that's, the where, that, that's where it started. That's the person I did speak with. Um, but, but the other thing I want to note as far as, you know, email exchange, there are many times when I'm sending emails to the board where I am providing legal advice to the board on an issue. And I do mark them as confidential attorney-client privilege because I don't think that those are something that would be um, discoverable under a FOIL request. You know, I cannot provide legal advice to the board um, on matters that could raise a safety concern. That's not something, that's not advice I would give you in the public eye. It's advice I would give to you privately. Mm -hmm. Clearly, we can't meet every time there's some legal advice that I want to give to you. Um, so that is done through email. Otherwise, everything would have to wait until we have another meeting and do an executive session 
to do that. So I, I did just want to mention that with respect to you. And that's why I do mark the emails as confidential attorney-client privileged material. So, I mean, the whole thing came as a concern from a local person about something that had been happening for quite a while. Quite a while. You know, when the, when the concern came up about making it no parking, then that rose an issue using the parking spaces for funerals and processions at the summertime. And then that's when we chimed in about no parking or overnight parking. So that's basically which how was that. the original request anyway from the from the homeowner was, yeah, it was no overnight no overnight parking. Right, it was just an issue that um, Stan raised um, that that he thought he had a concern about the site distance. Um, I, I, I'm not that familiar with it, so I don't know if there's parking space available within the cemetery when people are there. Or no. no, no, there is not. On the outside of the cemetery. When there's a funeral, they park. They have to in the pull, in the pullover space from Route 22, or if they're going there to mourn, they're they're in the space. Okay. So the the other possibility would be um, Stan would be more familiar with it. I haven't gone down and looked at the location. Um, if there's a site distance issue. Do you want DOT to post you no know, parking signs for a certain number of feet beyond the intersecting roadway so that if someone is turning, they can see? I mean, we never had an issue with site or anything. The only reason there was an issue was from the trucks parking there overnight and leaving their motors. This right. is just what Stan raised. You know, but I mean, for years, that pillow off has been there. We never had a site issue. We never had a problem with anybody crossing 22 to get to the rail trail that parked there. I'm, I'm sorry if you can't cross the road, you shouldn't be crossing the road. But you know, it's not labeled rail trail parking lot. It's it's not labeled any kind of parking lot. It's just a pull off. You know, and the whole problem with now with the trucks parking there, with no signs, no rules, no regulations. The truck is parked on the side of the road. They could right. park there as long as they want. There's plenty of pull off. Off, you know, the, it, it's a. If you were going to pull off on the side of the road, that's where you'd pull off, right? Because yes. it's a generous shoulder. But I mean, I think the only thing we need is no overnight parking, no overnight and it solves parking. the problem that's been raised. With the problem with the DOT though is they want a time span on it. No, which is What's fine. overnight? So right. I mean, I think the seven to seven is fine. Right. I don't think we have to go crazy with the no parking no. and have three parking signs that say no overnight parking, one parking sign that says no parking. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm okay with the seven to seven, no overnight park. Yeah, because basically that's what the resolution addresses is the overnight. Now, do you want to proceed with the resolution? You want me to read it? Sure. Okay. Resolution authorizing request to resolution authorizing request to New York State Department of Transportation to place no parking signage along Route 22 in the town of Amenia. Whereas the town board of the town of Amenia town board has been made aware of certain overnight parking vehicles, including tractor trailer trucks, on or along New York State Route 22 in the vicinity of Lake Amenia Road and northward in the town of Amenia, and whereas the town board has made aware that such vehicles may block access to fire hydrants and frequently have engine running near residents for extended periods of time, thus creating issues of safety, noise, and nuisance. And whereas the town board, through the town supervisor and the town attorney, has conferred with the Town of Amenia Superintendent of Highways and the New York State Department of Transportation regarding this issue of such overnight parking on Route 22. Now therefore be it resolved by the Town Board duly conveyed at regular section, session on August 4th, 2016 as follows. That after conferring with the Town of Amenia Superintendent of Highways and State DOT, and upon due deliberation and the interest of public safety, the town board hereby authorizes the submission of and hereby makes a formal request to the state DOT for the placement of no parking signage on and along Route 22 from the center line of Lake Amenia Road northward 
from, from a distance of approximately 250 feet between roadway mile markers 228204-1238 and 228204-1239, prohibiting such parking on Route 22 during the hours of 7 p.m. to 7 a.m and that the town supervisor, Victoria Perotti, and town of Amenia superintendent of highways, Stanley Heightwed, uh, Whitehead, are hereby authorized to comp complete and execute any necessary applications or documents required by New York State to proceed with pl placement of the appropriate signage as authorized herein. The following resolution was made by... Do you make the resolution? Mike Delango, mm -hmm. seconded by... Seconded. Damien, and the vote upon with all council women's and councilmen's go. I guess that's your job, right, though? <laughs> Professor Perotti, you're doing great, though, Mike. Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Hitzberger? Aye. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. And Councilman Delango? Yes. Okay, as a result of the um, heating uh, system uh, project we currently have uh, going on, we have to, um, we're going to have to move some uh, ca cable and move some lines within uh, the town to relocate in the town clerk's office, court clerk's office, assessor's office, supervisor's office, and historical society. So we have a proposal from Superior, who is our telephone system provider, to spend $1,772.14 to um, actually make these changes in order to accommodate the new heating system. So I just need approval to authorize the work. And he's saying it, it will probably be less because he's uh, billing labor for two men for one day. Yes. Okay. That's what she needs off. I'll make the motion. Second. Correction. You second? Mm hmm. Councilman Hitzelberger? Aye. Councilman Delango? I mean, for seventeen hundred dollars, should we get a second estimate? Would they? They're the ones that already do all our do the phone system. Do our do the that's our phone service. They provider. do the the phone system. That's the going rate. Um, these are. I mean, this is just what it costs. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilman Doyle. Yes. Supervisor Party. Yes. And I have um, three estimates for the um, design, the engineering design for the new generator. Um, it includes uh, the design, preparation, bid doc, preparing bid documents, and also um, construction administration. Um, I had. Um, P. Sotero from Morris Associates go through all three um, estimates to make sure that everybody was bidding on the same thing, all their bids were comparable for what they were bidding. So from Lewis Engineering, I have a lump sum bid of 16500 From Bellinzer Engineering, I have a bid of $9,975, um, and it said all reimbursable expenses, printing, filing fees are to be billed at cost plus 10% overhead in addition to fee noted above. And I have a bid from Whitman Engineering for $11,000. Has Whitman gone down in price since 2013? 
Oh, I didn't print the right one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that was 2000. I think you just put the wrong date. Yeah, because you got the bid of February 4, mm -hmm. 2013. Hmm. You want to table this to the next meeting? Yeah, we can table this to the next meeting and I'll check it. Yeah, we'll table but I don't, it. I don't think it's. Well, you know, we. It's, I want to make sure it's right. Yeah. yeah. Now, why we're on this? I mean, what what are we deciding on the generator? Is it running the whole building? Is it yes. running partial? The whole building. The whole building. Now, why? Why what? What's the purpose of the generator? The purpose of the generator is not only to protect the new heating system, but also for us to be a regional shelter and okay. shelter people here. Now, do these engineers, do they know that we're trying to go after a regional s shelter? Yes. Because I think the specs are different if it was just to... They all know that. They know that we're going after a regional right. thing, so they're going to design the system for that. Yes. And we can table it to the next meeting. We don't have to decide right away. Uh, transfer funds resolution number 49. Mm -hmm. Whereas the town board has the authority to transfer funds when necessary and unanticipated to amend the budget. Whereas budget amendment for the highway fund increasing expense line 50104.03.149 Superintendent of Highways CE drug and alcohol testing by $600 and decrease expense line 51404.3 brush and weeds drug and alcohol testing by $600 to comply with OSC expenditure account codes. Actual amount left in line will be transferred after this correction. Whereas budget amendment for the water fund increasing expense line 83401.06 Transmission distribution PS by $2,000 and decrease expense line 83404.06. Transmission distribution by $2,000 to pay highway department personnel for valve repair on main water line, hydrant replacement, and other repairs. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the town board authorize the transfer of necessary budget lines to process the transaction. I make that motion. Second. Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Councilman Hitzelberger? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Councilman Doyle? Yes. Uh, the only other thing I have in other matters, um, we were talking about having Wi-Fi access in this part of the building. And we were sent a proposal by BAS, if you want to have time to look at it and think about it. Um, they would be able to um, change um, the Wi-Fi signal so that we would be able to have, people would be able to have Wi-Fi in this area of the building who didn't, wasn't, weren't necessarily an optimum customer. So um, I just got it. Uh, today, so if you want to table it, think about it, or to the next meeting, it's fine with me. I mean, you guys are the computer guys. Uh, my question isn't regarding the pricing. I mean, the, the pricing is adequate. Um, my question is just regarding, you know, do we need it, really need it? The reason that they have to use the um, the pricing is for uh, a, a secure Wi-Fi connection because it's going into the town system. Um, they mentioned a guest network in there as well, so the general public would be. I just I remember there were a couple times we've had presentations where people brought you know a computer or something, and if there's no. So you feel there's a need for it for presentations, presenters. presentations, the general public who you know is here. Um. Well, I mean, because one of the things we do at the beginning of the year was we tell everybody turn off your smartphones and your cell phones when you walk in this room. Um, John Marie, what about the court? 
Um, do the you have the same? like to have access. We do not have access in the judges' chambers in the courtroom. Victoria and I were actually in the judges' chambers when I pointed it out because it stemmed from our conversation from the last meeting that I said there, there is nothing down here because yeah, it's like you so you, you, you know you come necessary. halway down the hall and there's nothing. It yeah, stops I know. Right in the mm -hmm. middle of the hall. No, I know exactly where it stops because oh. I had to sit out with Vicky in the hallway in a particular <laughs> spot one time to work on her email. And it just happened to be cable vision was coming the yeah. same day when she says, what do you want? I said, well, why am I in this room? And well, I think if there's a, if there's a business purpose for it, um, you know, that's what the equipment costs. Uh, so I would make a motion that we accept the proposal for the new Wi-Fi access points from BAS. Second that. Councilman Hitzberger. Aye. Councilman Glango. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilman Doyle. Yes. And Supervisor Crody. Yes. Thank you guys. <coughs> Is there a public comment? Town board comments? I have a few items. Um, I met with Jill Winsby Fine, who's our new instructor for the Amenia Free Theater Arts Program, mm -hmm. and she will be uh, creating the new flyer and registration form that will be out the 1st of September. And um, the dates tentatively are September 24th through December 10th on Saturdays again and will probably be Saturday mornings and they'll be uh, the first, at the first session, there'll be a time when we can all talk about what time frames will work for the number of people who are interested. So uh, that's the tentative idea. And um, we're just going forward with uh, the programs. I did put in a, a submitted an interim report to the Arts Mid-Hudson um, uh, group that provided a $1,500 um, decentralization project grant to the program this year. So try to stay on top of that. And we'll have a press release out soon. And thank you very much for um, anybody who's interested. You can get in touch with me or Jill wins be fine. Um, I would be happy to go ahead and send re those resolutions that we just passed tonight to the County Planning and Development, to um, uh, the two people, uh, uh, Bob Wills is, is somebody in the mapping department and make sure that they know that we passed those and that they can go ahead and close that thing and go ahead and print those maps if that's okay with everybody else. Sure. They've we'll been waiting on pins and needles, wondering mm -hmm. where our resolutions are. Now I'm happy to tell them they can go ahead and plot their, their map. Um, that's all I have. I, I will look into doggy way stations. Thank you, um, Don Marie, for giving me some more information. If we have some money left over in community beautification, I will be recommending that we purchase at least one to try at the rail trail and see if that doesn't help with um, the, the problems that we've had with dogs um, being on the rail trail and leaving unfriendly um, memorabilia behind. <laughs> So I think it will be easier for dog owners and maybe help remind them that they're responsible for it and that it's actually against the law, I believe, to do that. So I'll, I'll be looking into that a little bit more carefully. That's all I have. Oh, well, I have to say, uh, my two favorite events are this weekend. One of them is um, the Millbrook Course Trials is being held over um, on Bangalamenia Road. Um, over by Cool Park. It's a fabulous event, about 500 horses and riders from all over uh, the United States um, are competing here. One of them is the son of uh, Bruce Davidson, who was like a six time gold medal Olympic champion. Um, that family's been competing here in Millbrook for, uh, I'd say, 30 years. I mean, he was a Millbrook Pony Clubber, Bruce Davidson. This is a really, really important event as far as the horse equestrian world is concerned. It's a selection trials for the Olympics. It's very fun to go out and see it, even if you don't know anything about it. It's being held, the dressage was today. There's more dressage tomorrow. And on Saturday, if you go early in the morning, you'll see the advanced go. Those are the top, top horses in the country. And you just have to be careful where sensible foot, 
footwear because you're walking cross country miles in some cases if you're really interested or you can just park yourself at the water jump and see quite a number of fences. I'd recommend that if you haven't seen anything of it. You see the horses splash in, jump, you know, right into the water and, and jump out and carry on and gallop off and you can see several horses at one time. So it's, it's, it's fun and just be uh, very um, careful if you don't know where to go, approach the um, secretary's tent or uh, some of the volunteers that will greet you and they'll tell you how to get to where you want to go and to be mindful of horses that are galloping around the course. So if you see white tapes, you know, follow the white tape and stay behind the spectator part and don't, you know, get in the path of a galloping horse. So it's a lot of fun and that's one of my favorite things. Unfortunately, it's the exact same time as our Wasaic project. So if somebody else wanted to talk about that, that's fine. But I know I'm a big fan of the dance program. And on Friday night from 6 to 7, there'll be um, you know, some really interesting dance uh, troops doing um, some programs that's free. And 6 to 7, it's right under the tent on the mill's uh, porch there. It's just informal, but a lot of fun, a lot of things that just stretch your mind. and. It's a, it's a great thing. It's like Jacob's Pillow right here in Wasaic. I mean, you can't get better because it's so uh, available. I think the fire company is probably doing hot dogs and hamburgers. and They are. So there's food, there's art, there's... The Lantern is going to be doing pizza, and the proceeds will be going to the Wasaic project. Vicki, on the horse trials, is there an entry fee There's for that? no fee. Uh, there's a free program. It's absolutely fabulous. I saw Pedro Gutierrez is competing at the advanced level. I didn't know if that's your father or your your <laughs> your, your brother, your um, sister Gutierrez. It, it is true. He's I, I don't think it's now. my father. It's not. You don't think so? Well, he might have a second career, but you know, my fabulous program, great vending. You know, it's a it's a serious serious event. And I see on my way when I went to volunteer, a lot of people driving back and forth to Amin and getting their breakfast and stuff. So I'm sure that the, you know, the bed and breakfast and things are getting an extra boost. I know all the officials were going out to dinner, so it's good for the economy, even if you don't go out and see it yourself. It's good for Amenia. Yeah, for the was during the Wasaic project is actually Friday, all day Saturday and Sunday. That's right. Uh, the Wasaic Ladies Auxiliary is doing breakfast Saturday morning and Sunday morning. So if you don't feel like cooking breakfast, there, it's a good place to go. And the Wasaic Project is billing Sunday as the family-friendly day. So that's the day to bring the kids and they'll have activities there for um, younger folks. And it's a furnace bank and firehouse row that are closed? Yes. And there are a lot of local riders. I just quickly you know, went through the roster and I found probably 15 local riders competing in this very, very serious event. So congratulations if you're riding or if you're helping. There are probably 50 volunteers like me who spend the day there enjoying seeing a lot of fabulous horses going. It's really, really fun to see. And I saw a lot of good spectators out there who approached me and said, where do I stand? Where do I see the best? Where's my best vantage point? We've never been here before. So um, just don't, don't be shy to pull over somebody on a golf court and say, what do I do? Where do I get my program? How do I know what's going on? So we're all happy to help. Is there any other town board comments? Um, yeah, I had a follow up on, um, we were talking about uh, Mark Molinaro's Think Differently campaign. Mm -hmm. um, so I did reach out to my cousin um, who has a, a child with autism and um, he got back to me but not until late so I didn't get the information to forward to the board. Um, but what he forwarded me were um, essentially if, if you want to have an event that um, would allow people who have children who, for example, are autistic, you would want that event to be something that, you know, was kind of a calm event, um, didn't have a lot of loud noises or 
loud, you know, lights or bangy things going off and everything, something where, and, and with space. So if the families needed, they could step away and, and you know, give the child the space that they needed um, to, to be. Um, so if we have an event, and I was trying to think of events that we have happening in our community, um, like uh, the schoolhouse picnic, for example, they have the petting zoo, which is nice. It's a quiet, it's a family event. I mean, they do have the music and everything, but it is something you can, you can step away from. Um, then he, he, so I was thinking that that might be an event that we could um, see if they would be interested in partnering in a Think Differently activity. And he sent me three different um, activities um, where people who don't have um, issues could kind of, you know, do the walk in the other person's shoe kind of thing. Um, like for autism, they have you uh, tape gloves full of water and rice and beans to your hands, and then you have to uh, try and, you know, write and move papers around and things like that, and and have balloons popping in your ears and people telling you to hurry up and you know like five people talking at you at once so it kind of gives you like the a, a bit of a better understanding so um, that was one of the exercises so I, I'm going to forward these to y'all and um, maybe if we could partner with you know some town event or some uh, society's event that's happening in town it would be a, a good chance um, to get people out and think differently. Well, thank you for taking the initiative and uh, looking for things that we can do. Yeah. That, that was all I had. Okay, is there any other town board comments? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. See, I made it before.